So as you sit shoulder to shoulder in this small space together and feel the connection of family and the blessings of this family. So take another breath in about that with me. And isn't that nice? And what a, what a beautiful opportunity to sit shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart, to all together have our feet planted on our beautiful Gaia in this magical place, in the crystal beds and the water of Berkeley Springs and the heart and the soul of this land and the people here and the energy that brought us all together today. So just let yourself feel more deeply into that, out of your head and into your body, and the energy, the energy that the facts carry, the energy that interests you is what draws you here. And if you didn't know what you were coming for today, perhaps these days following will unfold that for you as you learn more about your intuitive voice. And as you experience more synchronicities that lead you to more love and more family and more opening in the heart, in the soul, and in the hands of spirit. So as we welcome the information and the guidance of the cryon energy, we also express gratitude from the deepest parts of ourselves, welling up through us, through our feet, through Gaia, out through the top of our heads, connecting us to that beautiful, loving, cosmic vibration that we share. Greetings, dear ones. I'm crying on a magnetic service. This communication, the channeling of today, will be a little different. The difference is that you need to hear an overview. I'm going to call it the overview of the future, and yet, the very term future is elusive. It's not about the future that is immediate, it's about the future of the planet. This is the kind of channel that my partner has trouble with because the things that are delivered are delivered outside of the purview of his three-dimensional brain. He receives these kinds of messages some, sometimes in duplicate and triplicate. At the same time he's talking to you, he gets other messages so he can enhance it. This is the best we can do to give a multi-dimensional message to a three-dimensional brain. And so he struggles sometimes. And if it takes place, he'll simply back up and give it again. It's the kind of message that you wish to review and listen to again. It's the kind of message that you might put in a time capsule. The kind that is a human time capsule so that you might open it and understand it more fully when things have changed. It's not going to be a long channel, but it's going to be one filled with information of the kind that we not necessarily have given before. Pieces and parts of it have been alluded to. We want to paint a picture of a bigger picture. My partner talks about the shift, I talk about the shift. My partner is giving lectures on what is next but his lectures are the pablum to what is next. 
But he gives it to a humanity that goes step by step. And only begins to move into new areas of understanding as they examine the old ones and try to decipher what could be different. And it's slow. But that's where it begins. And if I could, I would preface all of this by telling you that what is going on on earth at this moment, we have seen before. Dear ones, if you could compare the galaxy and all of the planets that have gone through this before as a school, this would be the graduation of the first step. And as we have looked at what has taken place in this galaxy with others before you, we know what's coming. Because the steps that are next for you are the same steps that were taken before. What you describe as human consciousness isn't. It's consciousness. It only belongs to the human because you're human. It's the same kind of thing, energy. The attributes and the confluences of the energies are almost identical to the consciousness that the other planets have gone through. And the reason is because life is similar some almost identical from planet to planet to planet because the galaxy is made up of fractals. From the smallest to the largest, you're going to see repetitive parts of the same thing. It's a beautiful system. And what it means is it gives rise on other planets. One, perhaps right now, that's just getting life, the building blocks of DNA, getting ready to be seeded by you <laughs> in the future. DNA. Same kind as you have, the same amino acid structures as you have, is common to all. So we've seen this before. You're a young civilization, dear one. A young. So young it's hard to even give you a perspective of how young. Your civilization hasn't even been around the galaxy one time yet. Hardly. The almost 200 million years that it takes to go around one time, one rev, there are societies and civilizations that have been around three revs. The Pleiadians have a rev. Hmm. to tell you how old some life is in this galaxy way before you some of them visit you none of them none of them are able to influence you to the degree that you can influence yourselves galaxy teems with life and you're well hidden by the way We've seen this before. I want to tell you a bigger picture. Your youth and how young you are starts to explain why the earth has been through such a horrendous time. Civilization looks ugly to you. Your past and your history filled with survival and killing, weaponry, mass destruction, no elegance of thought for life, torture. They all went through that. They all did. Because civilization builds itself as your children build themselves as a metaphor through life. There comes a time, and we've said it before, where a child becomes self-aware and the ego takes over and all they think of is themselves and survival. On the playground at school, some of them become bullies. 
just to survive. Some of them never get over it. And they're bullies as adults because they never moved into the elegance of the wisdom that you have. As you grow up, there, there becomes a knowledge and a wisdom that occurs to you that there's a better way to solve problems through listening and cooperation. You have to, to survive. But the children don't know that. And they will flail. And generation after generation, you bring up children, and they'll do the same thing. And they'll go through the terrible twos and the thrashing threes in the teenage years, and it's over. And hopefully they'll grow up. And if I could be so simplistic to apply this to human civilization, let me do it. You're still on the playground. You're still pushing each other around. You're still getting reactions. You're still in survival. Until about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, even 50 where it started to shift just a little. We have told you over and over. I'm not going to visit it again, what the timetable was, what the calendar said, why I'm here. No, I want to go further than that in this particular channel. I want to talk to you about energy not seen. We're going to talk about this in two places in this channel, and this is the first. Energy not seen. There is a complement of energy in the galaxy that interests you and you can't see it. But you want to. Because it touches you in ways that are fascinating. This unseen energy is responsible for what the New Agers sense first. You're able to pick up energy in someone's aura, somehow, some way. A medical intuitive can actually feel what is wrong. The aura broadcasts sickness, health, joy. What is that? Wouldn't you like to bottle it and take it home and analyze it? And you can't. The very institute that puts this event on so interested in these energies, unseen energies that make a difference. What is it a reader reads or a psychic feels or a futurist can futurize? Where does it come from? Why is it so elusive? And I'm going to tell you in just a moment a little bit more about this. For it's the key to the future. A child would not know about the elegance of wisdom, how to put things together instead of tearing them apart. A child who is ego-driven, who is only waking up to being self-aware, is only going to do what the child does. The only equipment the child has in its very elementary way is going to lash out in certain ways and do certain things. And if you gave them a plate of wisdom, they'd look at it and they'd have no idea what it was and throw it away. This is all about to change. Because this unseen energy has attributes you don't know anything about. And you're discovering. First of all, everything about this unseen energy, which we call the quantum consciousness of humanity, is starting to enhance itself so that it'll be a little more obvious. If I took you to another civilization like the Pleiadian, like the Orion, the Arcturian, if I took you to any of those, you would not recognize anything. First of all, they don't have technology. How about that? Because physical things that do things, they threw away long ago when they realized that the physics of human consciousness could do everything they ever wanted. That's where it's going. And you still wonder what it is. Truly, what is this? How does it work? 
Is it quantitative? If you have more of it, does it do more things? And the answer is no. Now, we have given you some hints about it. Human consciousness has no succinct definition I could give you that would make any sense at all. Because we have told you that less than 1%, one percent, one half percent of humanity has to awaken in a certain way to affect the entire planet. Now that ought to tell you it's not quantitative. It's not 3D, is it? Less than one half of one percent. <laughs> if you really want to know the numbers, if you need the numbers, that ought to tell you something. It's not about how many of you there are, dear ones. It really isn't. Because there is something hiding here. There is a system, a, a confluence of systems that you don't know anything about. So let's talk about them. Now, this is not going to be understandable to all of you. That is why you're going to listen to this again if you choose. And others will put it in a time capsule if they choose. And these things may very well pop up later. And you'll go, oh. How do you explain the internet to somebody who's never seen a computer? Where do you begin? How do you explain the elegance of a race car to somebody who hasn't invented a wheel yet? And this is the issue. How do I tell you about what you have no concept of and you're not ready to know because you've got to walk through the steps? So let me give you some building blocks and some metaphors. There's something called a wisdom barrier. The wisdom barrier is what we have described as what happens in human consciousness when certain attributes occur that are not quantitative. That is to say, it's not about how many. It's about other things that will occur within the physics of consciousness that you don't know yet anything about this system that must occur in a certain way in a distributed way, not a centralized way, in order to break this barrier called the wisdom barrier. And when it is broken, what it tells us is that humanity has passed a point where it is in survival mode and goes to a mode that starts to build the wisdom of getting along. The wisdom that enhances the brains of all humanity to a point where they can agree on something that they never even knew before without actually having it taught. Did you hear that? Now you didn't expect that. It surrounds the human being in such a way and the civilization in such a way that when you're born it becomes second nature. The wisdom of getting on. It's called the wisdom barrier. And let me tell you what's happening. You, you're there. And it's not going to give you fireworks or sparks in the sky. There's not going to be a celebration. There's not going to be balloons. Except on my side of the veil. And there's all of those. Because you're there. You're looking into the very essence of it. You are peeking into what makes it work. You're about to push the envelope that will affect all humanity. Not just the light workers. Not just the old souls. You're about to push a button on physics you didn't know existed. Now this is a biggie. The missing piece. How do I explain this? My partner go very slow. Humanity explains things only from what they know, not what they don't know. Here's an example. You look into space. Science looks into space, and they find attributes they cannot explain that do not seem to be Newtonian. 
But Newtonian physics is the gold standard of motion everywhere. And so the human being struggles to find formulas that will put the unexplained into Newtonian boxes. Welcome to dark matter. You're going to laugh later. <laughs> we have told you this before, but this is the human propensity. Take what is known, observe what is unknown but there, and place it into the boxes of the known. Even if they're convoluted, even if they don't make sense, even if they're mysterious. Instead of looking and saying, maybe, just maybe, there are missing laws of physics we don't know about that would explain this and that and this and that. Well, let me tell you one of the biggest places, places that you're missing. The place of the physics of consciousness. Listen to me. How do you define consciousness? Well, it's developed through a very special thought of humans and this and that. No, it isn't. Consciousness is physics, and you should get used to this. You are developing it through human thought, unaware that there are rules of consciousness, and it is a part of quantum physics. There are rules, there are postulates, there are beautiful, beautiful attributes of the physics of consciousness that are going to start to explain what's going to happen in the future, but you don't see it that way. The missing piece is the knowledge that you can track this, that you can plot it, you can create it even outside of humanity. Did you know that? It's beautiful because when I start to tell you some of the attributes of the physics of consciousness, you're going to go, oh. What are the attributes of physics? What do you know? The, at the answer is actually very little, but what you do know, you experiment with, you create things. The very technology that you have that is so beautiful on this planet is brought to you by the knowledge of the physics that you know. And that there's cause and reaction. You build this and this happens. You put together certain kinds of things and through all of the, all of the principles and the rules that you understand and the four basic laws that you have out of six, you know what they are and you're using them. Beautiful. Now what if I told you that that same scenario exists in consciousness? There are laws of consciousness that are just like the laws of physics in that there's causal, there's effect. But in a quantum world, they're not linear. And so they create certain kinds of things. The physics of consciousness being quantum and not linear creates attributes that are going to create the future of this planet. And now, my partner, it gets hard. Because I'm showing my partner things right now, and he can't, he can't verbalize this. So I'm going to say, do your best. He sees the emotion of it. And he goes, oh, if you knew the physics of consciousness, you can build a better world. Mm -hmm. It has attributes. First of all, it does not travel from place to place. It does not travel in a straight direction. It does not travel. Consciousness is not in one place going to another. Consciousness does not expand. It does not get bigger or smaller. Consciousness is. Consciousness of physics, just like attributes of physics, sit there ready to be enhanced or not based upon other laws around it. And when they're applied, then they all change. Consciousness. Let me tell you about a couple of them. One is called the benevolence factor. Did you know that as the physics of consciousness is explored and the wisdom factor is applied and the barrier is passed, what happens next is an exponential 
understanding and application of the rules of consciousness that create a factor which generates benevolent action. Oh, that's convoluted, my partner. Can you say that better? Let me tell you this way. Right now on this planet, there's a struggle between forces. Because of the consciousness that you have developed here, and the rules that you have put in place through the physics of consciousness, there is an allowance right now of many things on this planet that we've never talked about. Is there evil on the planet? Yep. Are there entities dedicated to come in and mess with you? Yes. That's, is that shocking? And why is that? And why would that be? Because this test allows it. Because what you have created in the physics of consciousness and the rules that have applied and how you're using it, allow it. But the next step past the wisdom barrier enhances those, those very patterns of consciousness that you're going to discover as part of physics that close the door. Did you get that? When the rules of physics are applied in certain situations, you can control what happens. It's the same in consciousness. When you reach a point of understanding the physics of consciousness, how it works, the mechanics of it, the distribution of it. Listen, I'm giving my partner something and he's going to say it and it's not going to make sense to anything. The spiral delivery of it. Now that's going to make sense to somebody. You shut the door and the things that have visited this planet can't anymore. And those places of darkness that would want to come in and play with your consciousness because it's at the teenage level of physics can't get in. That's the best explanation we have for what is going to happen in the future. And the Pleiadians are jumping up and down because they know what happened. It's almost an exponential evolution if you want it to be. One thing leads to another. It builds on itself. You don't have to start all over every single time you're born, like my partner described today. You come in with the factors that you learned before and build upon them. If I could use the term born wise, I would. And it's going to change everything. And then when the physics is revealed, you'll understand why there are machines that can work with consciousness. You're not going to need them. Not long. How many generations are required, Cryon? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. The reason is I don't want to give you a setup that will spoil the party. Because every single planet has had its own time cycle of the delivery of this through their own free choice. How does it work? How fast does it work? When will it start? It's already started. You are at the wisdom barrier. Once you are at the wisdom barrier, I would like to tell you that the track record of all the planets who have reached the wisdom barrier are the same. They all move forward. Every single one. You threw a switch. And no amount of dark energy can stop it. Oh, it'll try. I told you that before. Humans invested in old ways. Like the kids on the playground who don't want to grow up. They'll flail. They'll bully. Until their last breath. But they will awaken in a world. And they haven't got a chance to do it again. And this is what we're talking about. 
the benevolent factor, the wisdom barrier, these things start to work in the laws of the consciousness of physics in ways that you will indeed figure out creating increased DNA percentage activation, creating a generation after generation, eventually, I won't tell you how long, of a human being who can create things out of nothing, who have control over physics, which is a lower kind of physics. The highest kind of physics is consciousness. And consciousness physics can control 3D physics any day. I'll wrap this up by telling you all of you are going to be there to see it. All of you. Every single one. Because that is the plan, old soul. You come back and you enter a world that you always wished you could have. Peace on earth? Oh, that's easy. That just, that's the beginning. That's planting the seeds. That's a given. Look at your news. It's not gonna, it's not gonna look like it, is it? That's just today. Peace on earth. That's not the goal. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> that's just a given. When you grow up and you're an adult, you stop throwing stones at each other on the playground. You stop. You're, you have an, a more elegant idea. That's peace on earth. That's the beginning. The very beginning. And then it gets good. This is what we see. I've never said these things in this way. I wanted you to hear the full story. What would happen to a civilization that could create anything it wanted physically, was never hungry, who could live as long as they wanted to, could put themselves in a quantum state if they wanted to, who had different sets of ideas of the way things should work, who had no central control. Did you hear that? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a managerless corporation? It's like that. And you would say, oh, that can't work. <laughs> oh, yes, it can. <laughs> That's what you're headed for. Government decentralized to where there is none. There will be no such thing as world government, dear ones. Instead, there will be world consciousness agreement. <laughs> You'll know better. How about that? What happens to a group of adults who go to a party for the first time and they've never met each other? What do they do? Throw rocks at each other? <laughs> no, there's a consciousness of the party. They get together. They talk to each other. They have fun. What about a planet that had just that? They're born into a situation where they know better. That's the wisdom factor. That's the barrier you're crossing. It allows you to throw away any other system you ever thought you needed, especially the ones that organize you into groups to do things. It will be second nature. You'll all know together. Too good to be true? <laughs> Ask a Pleiadian. Ask those from Orion. Ask those from Octurius. Ask any planet of free choice. Because they're all looking at you right now. This room is filled with them. And they're nodding their heads and saying, right on, right on, right on. You just wait. You'll be there. And so it is. <laughs>